This video is brought to you by the Deck of Many and their animated spell cards on sale now at animatedspells.com. Hello and welcome to the Gallant Goblin. Today we've got our third set of Icons of the Realms D&D Premium figures of the year so far and the seventh wave overall. The packaging has been changed up a little bit here, but the figures inside are still all great options for your D&D or Pathfinder games. They're all individually packaged, so you can get just the ones you want, and they have the best paint quality offered by WizKids. But before we jump in, a lot of you have been asking about our little plush cobalt over here. Well, we're finally ready to announce that we'll be bringing him to Kickstarter very soon. We're hoping to get enough support to be able to make plushies of all the little cobalts in our rainbow cobalt design. You can use the link in the eye in the corner of your screen or in the doohickey down below to sign up to be notified when the Kickstarter launches. And we're going to partly determine how many of the plushies we'll be able to make based on how many folks sign up. So if you want to get some cute cobalt plushies, go sign up today. But without further ado, let's jump in and take a closer look at our new premium figures here. Let's start with the human druid, who reminds me a little bit of Keyleth from Critical Role with her antlers. But based on the expression on her face, she's less than enthusiastic about the squirrel on her hand. I really dig the detail on her bag, which looks like it could be a bag of holding of some sort, and I like the vine-covered staff she's holding. I always approve of minis that come with little animal companions, and we get more than one in this set. Next, we have a dwarf wizard. This dabbing dwarf looks really familiar to me, but I wasn't really able to place her. She may just remind me of the dwarf cleric we had in the last set that had a similar pose with a similar spell effect, though he had a warhammer in the other hand. I wasn't really sure what was going on with her hair until I saw the render of the model, which makes it a little bit more clear. She does look just fine on the table, though. This human fighter might look familiar. He is the example fighter featured in the player's handbook, and it's great to get a mini of them. One other thing you may have noticed is that these minis now come with clear bases. They still retain the little terrain skateboards like our unpainted minis, and I don't anticipate that going away. But one benefit to the so-called skateboard is that it helps keep your figures from bending. The Elf Sorcerer is one of my favorites in the set. The light coloring on her robes combined with her pose make her really stand out on the table, which I think is vital for a PC mini. She very much looks like a hero, and an elf hero at that. She also has a really interesting looking staff that makes me think she could even be used as a mini in your Starfinder games, as an elven mystic or technomancer perhaps. Here's our other animal-friendly mini, the Elf Ranger with his pet hawk or falcon. He even brought along his falconry glove. If you're a Beastmaster Ranger, you can choose an animal companion that's a beast with a CR of one quarter or less. We have stat blocks for a blood hawk, an eagle, a giant owl, a regular hawk, a regular owl, or a vulture, among others that would make sense for this mini. Speaking of which, I know a lot of folks don't really dig the rules for the player's handbook version of the Beastmaster Ranger. They released a revised Ranger as Unearthed Arcana a couple of years ago, and all of that eventually morphed into the alternate class features that made it into Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. They introduced a revised version of the Animal Companion with three stat blocks. If you're playing by these rules, this could be your Beast of the Sky. Rounding out the elf portion of our collection is the half-elf bard, with a short sword, scabbard, translucent magical ball, ponytail, and loot. This is another good mini with a lighter color palette helping it stand out on the map. It's not one of those minis that seems full of personality like some do, but if this fits your character concept, it's a great little PC mini. And for all those times I ask for less represented races like lizard folk or goblins or gnomes, I'm also happy to get dedicated class minis like the bard here. This is my favorite mini in the set. Yes, he's a pretty bog-standard human paladin, but man, if he doesn't look like a champ with his sword held aloft and his shiny armor and shield. He doesn't seem to have any particular god or goddess's symbol on his gear that I can see, so your options are open here. Would maybe be cool to see these minis come with little transparent stickers that you could apply to the shield with those particular god symbols, though I know you run the risk of the stickers peeling off eventually and looking pretty cheap. 
Speaking of minis looking triumphant in their poses, we have our human barbarian here who reminds me of the barbarian mini we got back with Tyranny of Dragons. And the nice thing about barbarian minis is that you can use them for all the barbarian tribes along the Sword Coast and in other settings. This mini would make a great barbarian champion or tribe leader. With this mini and the paladin, I kind of want to see an adventuring party with minis all celebrating a victory. That's an optimistic way to run an adventure. Now we did have one curveball with this set. We got two Eberron minis, which I wasn't expecting. First, we have a Shifter Rogue. Shifters are sometimes called Wear Touched. They can't fully transform into a wolf or a rat or a walrus, but they have some bestial aspect to them. Now, aside from the pointy ears, I don't really see anything particularly bestial about this mini, so it could easily work as an elf rogue as well. She comes armed with a crossbow and dagger. Now our last mini is very identifiable. We have a Warforged Fighter. The Warforged are sentient crafted war machines with souls and free will. Now if you want this to be a regular humanoid with heavy armor and a Warforged-esque helm, you can totally use this mini for that as well. I applaud your creativity, and that could even be an interesting story choice. Happy to see interesting shields so well represented in this set as well. We have a couple of Warforged minis now, but I'm good with that. It's a pretty popular race after all. This set feels a bit more like the early premium waves to me. It's not flashy, there's no big spell effects. It generally focuses on the core races. Even the shifter can easily be an elf. But these minis do widen your options for some very popular class race combinations, and that's a good thing. I know I want to see hobgoblin clerics and bugbear alchemists and Lokatha bards, but most of the folks who are out there browsing the store shelves for minis are playing human fighters and elf rogues, so I'm glad that they have a few more cool minis to choose from. These premium figures are expected around the end of September or beginning of October 2021. They have an MSRP of $7.99 cents each. Let me know what you think of the set and which one's your favorite in the comment section down below. There's no details yet on the next wave of Icons of the Realms premium figures for D&D, so be sure you're subscribed to the channel so you can see them the moment we get our hands on them. But I do have the renders for the next wave of Pathfinder premium figures just for you. We've got six figures coming sometime around November. There's a female human bard, a male gnome druid, a male dwarf sorcerer, a female halfling cleric, a female human wizard, and a male elf magus, just in time for the new Secrets of Magic source book. And a lot of you have been asking about our plush kobold friend here. Well, I'm happy to tell you that we're launching a Kickstarter soon to not only give you the option of getting one of these for yourself, but also to help us develop and produce a whole line of kobold plushies. We're hoping to be able to make plushies of all the kobolds in our rainbow kobold design, and we can only do that with your help. If you're interested, hit the I in the corner of the screen or find a link in the doohickey down below to go sign up to be notified when we launch the Kickstarter. By signing up early, we can gauge demand and get a sense of what's possible with these kobolds. So thank you. And be sure to check out the pre-order sale for the Deck of Minis new animated spell cards. By now you probably know how much I love these cards. They add so much fun to your game while streamlining gameplay. It's just so much easier to look through the spells in your hand rather than having 20 open tabs on your browser or a ton of bookmark pages in your source books. Plus, seeing the spells in action right in front of you just adds so much wizardry to your games. They have spells of all levels for your D&D games. Go check them out today at Anime animatedspells.com. And thank you for watching today. If you enjoyed today's video, clicking the little thumbs up button helps other people find us. You can also click the bell icon to be notified when we drop new videos. And come join us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. For now though, stay safe, have fun, love each other, and I'll see you next time at the Gallant Goblin. <music>